Welcome back to uh, the video from trainingright.com. Uh, we are continuing on that uh, Selenium IDE uh, test script which we, we had built uh, in the previous video. Um, let's uh, bring up that uh, let's bring up that IDE and uh, let me quickly go over the scenario we were facing last time. Uh, the scenario which we were facing last time was uh, we we had um, originally recorded um, um, to test for that e-health uh, insurance uh, company and uh, uh, that website and then on that website if you uh, recall we we had entered on that website um, uh, information like a different zip code I guess um, if I recall that zip code was uh, let's go through that scenario that, that zip code was uh, 60502 and uh, if I run the, if I clear everything here, let me clear that and then run my test again. If I run my test, it's opening it up, it's putting that zip code, it's going in there, and then it will uh, get the data, and then my my test case just run fine, right? Now uh, we have 87 plans starting at blah blah blah. Okay. Now uh, what we have done is uh, we change the zip code. So we said, okay, we are no longer testing it for 60502. We want to test it for 1000 whatever, 2 or, or anything. And let's see what happens now. When you run the script at this time, of course, it's going to come back and then fail. And that, that is exactly what happened. It, it did pass the first line. It did pass the second line or the third line. But when it came to this, this line, it failed. And you see right here the error. It says the specified element is not a select and has no options of course what it means by that is if you recall um it was showing the county you had to select the county so the script was selecting the county now it is failing because for 10002 there is first of all no this 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 zip code does not fall in two counties if it doesn't fall in two counties then uh, what happens is it will not even show you that drop down and forget about the having any value in there and in this case it was looking for a value called cane um, so all that is not going to be found so how are we going to fix this problem the way we're going to fix this problem is uh, uh, first thing um, this IDE is a record and play tool right so you would just be recording on whatever you are recording and then you would be playing it back just to make sure that the script is, is or the application is behaving the way it is supposed to behave or not but when you try to change the the data here that is called like the parameterization right or, or supplying a different set of data when you supply a different set of data uh, the the application will behave differently and you have not recorded uh, those possibilities in here. So now the question is, um, if I enter a different value, then I, you know, I want the application or I want my test script to not execute this this line of code. So you should be doing some logic here. So you're talking about like putting an if statement, right? Uh, unfortunately, you cannot be putting any logic into what is called the IDE, at least in its, uh, in its basic form, the way it is. I mean, there are so many um, third party or, or, or genius guys out there who have written some um, addition or plugins to this uh, IDE, which will let you do things like uh, you could add uh, um, what is called the behavior or, or uh, the logic to this tool. But uh, the way it came out from selenium.hq.org, um, in its default uh, fashion, it does not have those features. So now the question is, what's the point in like, uh, you know, extending it uh, and all that when, um, you know, in real, in real world, you will not actually be using IDE a lot. IDE is used just, just for a quick uh, record and play. But when you're going to write your test cases, you're, you, you know, it, it, it is, it is better if you use, uh, or or not better. It is always, uh, you know, in real life, you will be using um, the other flavors of Selenium, which is Selenium IDE, or uh, or rather Selenium RC, or Selenium uh, Web Driver. So, uh, uh, if you ask me a question, oh, do you think that Selenium uh, IDE has got certain limitations? Yes, it does have certain certain limitations. What are the limitations it has got? Okay, number one. 
um, you know, this this IDE Selenium IDE tool can uh, it's a plugin on Firefox, so it can only test for Firefox. What if if you have to test the behavior of your application on on different set of browsers like uh, Internet Explorer? If you if you have to uh, test it on uh, Google Chrome, if you have to test it on uh, um, Apple Safari, unfortunately, Selenium IDE cannot do that because it's a plugin which uh, sits on top of uh, Firefox, and you could just test up. Uh, uh, the Firefox um, uh, uh, browser. So uh, now there are certain reasons you cannot do any logic, you cannot do things like that. So um, now you might say, "Hey, I have put in so much of effort in in order to uh, you know record this 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 test case." I mean, in this case, in our example, we have like five or six steps. But uh, what if if this this thing had like about like ten pages? You are to fill in your application uh, you have to enter some data so you were going from page to page and page to page and they were about like four or five different pages so that that this this script would have been such a long script so there was some time and effort put into generating this script and so if you are moving into selenium rc server uh, are we going to just leave the script as is? No, um, there is a solution for that the solution for that is if you have a working script then you could migrate or you could convert or you could take that script into uh, Selenium RC server or for that matter into Selenium uh, web driver. All right, so uh, the keyword here is if you have a working script. So so why don't we go ahead and then make it as a working uh, uh, script and then take that uh, into the next uh, version of Selenium. All right, in order to have it as a working uh, a test case, uh, either I can change back uh, the zip code to as is, or how about we do this? Uh, keep the zip code as is, but then uh, try and work the script so that you know if I don't need certain things, I can get rid of that. So in this example, in one zero 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 two, there is if you if you forget about running the script, if you run on your own, if you do a manual test to that and try and find out let's say if there is anything like a county for that so let me just do a manual test here so i do this and notice it is not bringing up it is not bringing up the county so that county part is not here so i am going to right click on that right and delete that command so that command is gone now so with that command gone uh let's see if we could go ahead <clears throat> and um run this script and see if it runs right okay so i'm gonna uh, clear my buffer here uh so that you can see all my logs here so that you, there's nothing in here now let us uh run the script okay it runs the first line second line third line it goes goes in there and <clears throat> lo and behold what you see is the script did run and we have uh uh the green here saying that the, uh, it did pass and we have something in here okay um all right, let's uh, very quickly talk about uh, when we do uh, testing. Um, basically, it's not about whether my script is running or not, but it's it's about how the application is behaving. So the application, you had put in a lot of information into the application or some information into the application in the form of the zip code, in the form of uh, your when do you want to start your policy, and uh, is this for a female, male, and uh, blah, 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 right? So we have put in some information in here. Now, when we entered that information, the system is, is the application is going to return you with some information back. So in this case, the application is returning you with an information like, uh, okay, we found like 16 plans uh, starting as low as blah, 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 right? Okay. Now, what if you have to capture this output? How are we going to capture this output? Well, there's an easy way to capture the output. Uh, um, the way we're going to be capturing the output is, okay, highlight the uh, the output which you need to capture which is uh i guess this this area right we need to capture that and so i could just highlight that and then right click and then here are my commands my commands are um you could verify if the text is present or not you could store that text uh and then there are some other commands like assert text and store text now there's the difference between verify text present and um assert text Right now, the difference uh, uh, basically is uh, the different. Basically, is uh, verifying is if this text is present, it will it will just verify that and say that yes, the text is present. But if you want to store that text which is coming out, then you will be selecting the store text present. 
Now, uh, now the difference between assert text and and verify text. Uh, assert um, text is basically it will not continue the text um, unless this this will pass. So if I'm storing a text uh, or if I'm asserting, asserting is making sure that that text does exist right um and if it does not exist it is the, the test is not gonna if if let's say if there were some more uh steps in here they will not get executed all right so that's that's the meaning of that all right let's let's store this text and the way i'm gonna store this text is uh i'm gonna do this uh i will say store text i click on that when i do that it is asking me okay you are capturing some data from the application so where are you going to keep that data into your into your test here into your test case so it is asking you to create a variable for that so i'm just going to create a variable call it as application output app output and i hit okay uh, once i do that it is going to uh, store the text now notice what i did I, I i made a mistake here i i had i was sitting here right and i said store store that so basically what would happen at that time is it will try to store it here and then it cannot store it here because the act, uh, the application has not executed so i'm just going to move this i'm just going to move this so drag it drag it along all the way to the end and then keep it keep it here right so actually i should have been here my mouse should have been here before i stored that right and also there is something like select window now so I, I only because of the fact I'm deleting it only because of the fact that I was sitting there and then I, I said store the text. So it is going to store the text there. So that's why we want to bring the store the text here all the way in the bottom. OK, now let us run the test and see if it works or not. So here is a, um, my uh, test case executing. And then uh, when it executes, it's going to come back. Then it, it's all green. That means that it did store the text. All right. It is storing the text which is coming out from the target. Uh, CSS H1. Now you might be saying that, hey, how did how does it know to to get this right? Uh, again, uh, going back to the previous video, we talked about uh, uh, Firebug, Firepath. So this is this is that. Let's say if you if you're not happy with it, if you say that you know what, I'm not happy with the CSS equals this and that. I need to use uh, the Firepath for that. That's easy, right? So you've already done that, and if you really need to do replace this and see if I could replace it with the fire, fire path or rather X path and see if the test case would still work. That's an easy solution. You come in here, right? Uh, if this window is not open, you could open the window by going into tools uh, and by going into Firebug. Right now it says hide Firebug, right? Hide Firebug, so it's 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 hidden. Um, you go to Firebug and open Firebug. When it opens Firebug, right, uh, we will take this, this click an element so I, I click on that and I go in here and I click on that so I'm saying that uh, this is what I need to capture this is what uh, so give me the uh, X path of that so here is the X path of that so I need to take the X path everything uh, such a long X path but then again you know the, uh, that X paths are nothing but uh, it's the unique way of identifying an element on this page. On this page, you have so many things in here. You have so many links here. You have this uh, image. You have this, this, this. How is it going to uniquely identify? Because we have that long X path. So I'm going to put that X path in here and see uh, if I if I could identify uh, the the area where I need to capture the text from and and store that text so the store text is a command which is going to capture the text which is found in this in this expat location and put it into this app output as a variable all right okay we did that now let's see if it works uh, i'm just going to run the script again and see okay i will clear this so that you see that there's nothing in here and and let me just uh run uh this script and see if it is going to execute okay see the yellow lines green lines and all that okay now it comes all the way in the bottom and then it goes and then the text is a pass right so it did store that information in here well very good so what we have seen so far is uh even though there are there are issues with uh, recording and playing of ide if you know how the application works uh you can go and then you can uh improvise on your on your test case so i have shown you that when we try to put a different uh, uh zip code here 
uh, the script would fail. The reason it would fail is because uh, this, this the script is not ready or not the, the tool does not uh, provide you with what is called um, parameterization of the data. So when you need to enter a different set of data, uh, you know, it allows you to uh, enter a different set of data by putting whatever it is, but then that different set of data would, would make the test uh, or the application behave differently. So when you put in a, a, a different zip code, it might add some more elements to it or some more objects here. And since, since, since selecting of the data from that object is required for a successful execution of that, and that will uh, of the test case and that is not possible because uh, we are not able to do any logic in here and that's the reason we want to move on to the next step which is taking this 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 already um, working um, your test case and taking the code of that and going into what is called the next version of uh, uh, selenium which is the selenium rc server so uh, sit tight uh, for uh, the next video, which I'm, I'm going to be uh, presenting you where I'll be showing you as how to migrate or how to take how to take the code or uh, first of all, where is that code? Right. So I'm going to be showing you things like, you know, going into the source and uh, going into some settings in here, which I'm going to walk you through uh, and then basically convert this test case into Selenium RC server. Um, and start working on RC server. All right. So that's where we are going with our next video. Uh, meanwhile, if you're not a student of this course, um, you can uh, go to trainingright.com and uh, look into the different courses which we are offering. And uh, if uh, anything um, is of your interest, uh, QTP, Selenium, or any other thing, then you could look into that. You could look into the course catalog. You could look into the different courses we offer. Uh, you could also, whether you enroll for the course or not, you could go ahead and then watch our free videos. Uh, most of the videos uh, um, are uh, actually for registered students, but then there are uh, there are at least some videos which I've posted uh, on YouTube.com um, and I've uh, posted he up here. So you could go and then take a look into those videos. And if you like what you are seeing here and if you want to enroll into a course, uh, you could uh, either call us at 732-998-6650 or you could write us uh, an email at sales at trainingright.com. All right. Thank you for joining me into this presentation. And I'll be looking forward to seeing you in another one. And um, meanwhile, if you're a student, keep practicing. Thank you.